Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anil and Laravel 8 is about to release. Today is the 4th of September and just after 4 days, here you can check that on the September 8th, Laravel 8 will be released. So the old topics, new features and improvements are mentioned here and uh, we will talk about these things today, right? So even, please uh, keep in mind, I'm not going to make a coding and example in this video because there is already around the 12 or 13 topics here so this is not possible to make this uh, coding for this topic but in this video i'll tell you about the overview of every topic that where we can use that and what is the improvement in this topic so these uh, topics are really helpful if you are looking for change in job uh, so in the interviews most of the time they ask the latest version interview questions and features and all so this is really helpful for them also and if you are a laravel developer then you must be updated with the new versions and new changes new features because laravel rapidly making the changes in the every feature in the every year they just uh, release the two versions and every versions they just make a lots of changes right so in the laravel 7 they just make the new things like components and send them kind of things in laravel ui now they have the jet streams and dynamic modeling and rate limiting lots of interesting features so now let's get started so first of all we will talk about so let me just take it uh, on the top uh, laravel jet stream so basically this is a replacement or upgrade of the laravel ui and the laravel 7 you must be heard about or maybe used about the laravel ui right so we just use it with for the login or uh, basic scroll folding you can see that and the registration and all right so now uh, laravel jet stream is basically a uh, improvement of this and now you can do the more things with it like login registration email verification two-factor authentications session management and lots of things so basically you can say that uh, this is the upgrade of the laravel ui right and yes they actually include the uh, tailwind css here uh, in the previous laravel ui we basically use the bootstrap so all good so we got just one more nice upgrade so that we can just uh, make the more beautiful ui and here just it told us right then the second thing which is the this is actually the most demanded thing since two or three year back right so which is the models directory so what actually uh, laravel do they make a poll on twitter about that they just ask that we need to make a directory for the models or not so even more than 80 percent people just vote that they must have to provide a module directory so now you will find that in the app you there is a modules directory and uh, the old modules will be placed here when you just make any module right and if you are using the laravel 7 and the previous version then you may notice that there is a no modules directory the users will be placed directly on the app directory right that's great uh yeah then uh, okay so if you just want to look for the uh, jet stream documentation then you can find here yes i will make a video on it so that we can just uh, go through with these things uh, even i will make a video on every topic so that we can just uh, understand it with the example but for now i cannot uh, do it because uh, i cannot make the one video on these uh, almost all topics right so this is the document for uh, jet stream if you just want to check it and uh, as i told you this is the previous one i just want to i just open this uh, seven front end for uh, making the compare so we can just remove it yeah so now there is a one more thing which is uh, uh, model factory classes in the laravel 7 and the previous version we basically use the class based factories right there is example in laravel 7 here you can check that for the writing factories we basically use the define function and we just uh, use the animus functions for that right but now here you can check that in the laravel 8 we have a factory class based right we will just write the factories with the class base right just find the difference here right so i will even make the video on this one also 
but uh, for now let's go for the another one which is uh, uh migration squeezing which is very important thing when we have a uh, complex project or a very large project so what actually happen when you have a large project there is a lots of database file and when you just do this uh, migration with these files what actually happen that uh, sometime the half of your files are migrated but half of your files are not migrated due to some errors and timeout and uh, the sizing issue and all that time this is very helpful then uh, it will what actually it will do when you just run the uh, migration it will just make a single file sql file for the file those are migrated the data which is already migrated right and uh, if you just got some error and uh, you just run it again then it will just check the sql file first and then it will just execute the remaining uh, data right so this is very helpful for a large amount of data set then which is a uh, job benching basically uh, maybe most of the you guys are not use the job benching but uh, this is also used for uh, large and inter intermediate level of project and if you just want to ask for some examples of uh, job benching is like uh, when you just work with the cache and radish we just work with the aws services and sometimes we use it with the database also right then that what actually we do we just make a bench of a uh, bunch of uh, uh, my bad it's a batch of files like this and uh, we will just wait to uh, done these uh, uh, these do jobs so we have the three options just after uh, done of these uh, uh, jobs first if all of these are successfully run then we can just write the next code here and if one of them is uh, getting failed then we can just write the code here and if we don't care that they are failed or they are successfully run if we don't care then we can just write here code like say just uh, three jobs are successfully run and two are failed and we just want to go for the next code then we can just write the next code here in the finally finally will be execute in both case when uh, uh, the old files are successed and when if someone is failed also right then uh, my favorite uh, feature is basically uh, improved rating limit so it will just uh, put a limit on the request or file uploading kind of things or uh, just surfing the page for a uh, limited way right for example uh, if just someone is uh, is accessing your page in a very fast way or if just someone want uh, put the load on your website then they are just accessing the page very rapidly right then we can control it for example here you can see that we just uh, put a limitation of uh, 1000 request per minute so if just someone uh, put the more request then uh, it will just stop him and after the next minute he can just put the more request right so that's very interesting feature similar with the if just someone want to upload the files and then we can just put a limit of uploading files so we can just here you can see that we just put the 100 files limit per minute so if user want to upload the some more files then he have to wait for at least one minute right so this is very interesting feature then uh, improved uh, maintenance mode so most of the time this is happen uh, when we are just uh, updating the database or updating the server kind of things then we just put our website on the maintenance mode right but maybe that time our very important user or you just want to access our website in the maintenance mode also then still you can access now so there is a secret code with that command you can generate it and uh, if you just provide this code to the users then they can just put your site and then this secret code and then they are still able to access your website in the maintenance mode also right but without this secret code they cannot access right then uh, uh, closer dispatch so if you just ask me in a one line what is the closer so basically this is a closer uh, anonymous function and we just uh, put here some functions as well basically you can say that this is a closer right and uh, before that we don't have a catch block here but now we have a dis 
a chain you can see that the dispatch chaining that means uh, if we are using the dispatch block and we just got some error then uh, we can just write here some alert kind of things here that uh, for example uh, database registration failed and user, user registration failed you cannot access this page and all this kind of stuff we can just show here right then uh, dynamic blade components are very important that means simply that you just want to load your component based on some conditions uh, let's say from america from uh, russia and from china from the india you just want to load the different different component on your website so that you can just put here some condition or you just want to put the condition on behalf of age or gender then you can just load the dynamic component here right so event listener improvements basically this is an improvement there is a uh, no major changes in the event listeners and there there is a three major improvements first one is in the event listener you can pass the closures here then you can see that we got the closure here then second thing is we can make the uh, listeners in a queuable so let's say we have the lots of functionality to do inside the listeners then we can just make it in the queue for that and the time delay we can also add it here right then uh, time testing helpers uh, what actually happen when you just making the testing sometimes you need to put some delay on your code right for the millisecond for the second for the minute that time before the 8th version of the laravel we don't have any option but now we have the option and we can use this uh, uh, carbon now and there is the uh, you can see that uh, uh, functions for timing delay right you can use it and uh, which is uh, another is the uh, artisan server commands improvement basically what happened in the previously when we are just making any change in the dot env file uh, like here right so after that we just need to restart our php artisan and then we are able to uh, reflect the changes right uh, but now you don't need to restart your or reload your uh, the php artisan server it will basically automatically reload when you just make any change in the dot env file right and personally when i just start the learning laravel then i just feel that i just put the credentials on the dot uh, env file and i did not restart my uh, artisan server and i'm just uh, checking that why i'm not able to connect with the database that time i just found that i need to restart my php artisan server to get the changes from .env file, right? So this is a very interesting feature. Then Tailwind Paginator, basically, uh, we uh, previously we also made the video on the Laravel pagination. That time we have uh, basic uh, pagination. There is a no uh, CSS and all, but now with the paginator, they just use the Tailwind pagination framework tailwind framework basically this is uh, tailwind pagination is not a framework tailwind is a framework right and yes they also provide the support with the bootstrap 3 and 4 also right so you can use a tailwind or you can use a bootstrap 3 and 4 whatever you want so these are the changes and please don't forget to subscribe my channel because uh, in the upcoming video i will cover this all stuff as well as all uh, uh videos i will just uh, reload them again about the laravel so you can say that uh, all videos of the laravel i will just make them from the scratch then these new features then project then api and unit test cases so you can expect around 100 video on the laravel now so if you still have any confusion ask me in the comment box please don't forget to subscribe my channel bye bye take care